Well, um, kind of getting into uh, some of the things that you're doing now with the Art League, mm-hmm. um, but let's kind of do some background on how things got off the ground now. Okay. Um, I know that in your career as an educator since 1987, when you got here to Woodville, <clears throat> that you did a lot for encouraging the younger people to to be interested in the arts and bringing art curriculum into the schools here. Mm-hmm. And after you retired, the uh, the Art League kind of that continued that service as well as uh, well, passion for education. Yeah, right? I did uh, art in Houston, and besides teaching, you know, all different levels of curriculum and academics, and moved here. They didn't have a art elementary art teacher at right. that time. And so started doing it in my class. And then the, everybody, I was fortunate to have a group of teachers that I worked with as fourth grade. And we were doing Fridays, what we used to call uh, fun Fridays, where they could you could get out of the box of the academic textbooks and introduce the kids with a lot of, of things. And it might be science out uh, in nature or uh, learning to speak Spanish or a whole variety of things. And that was when we um, started doing some art classes with them. Uh, and then it evolved, thanks to the administration, uh, to forming with, we had an elementary art uh, program, the art teachers. Uh, but when I went on up to middle school and high school as an administrator uh, and retired of 43 years as an educator, wow. I wanted to do something uh, into the community because right. as an artist um, through the years and I in 1970 I used to have my art with other local Tyler County artists but the only place we had to sell our work was at the Woodville Inn in their uh, dining room area so there wasn't anywhere around for our citizens, our community, to understand there are a lot of great talent artists around here. Uh, the Sullivan's Hardware Store would hang some things up for sale for yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So uh, we were lucky that we decided to, f- five of us met. Uh, we put a, a press release in the booster to say, if you mm-hmm. want to get together, uh, come join us. There were eight of us uh, that we got together and decided let's form a group We thought we were doing a group, (laughs) and when we finished it all, we had formed a nonprofit organization. And luckily, we had an individual in town who, um, the building where the gallery is now, Mm -hmm. uh, became available, and he paid the first year's rent. Wow. So that we went from just getting together and networking to suddenly having a gallery. Mm-hmm. And we've been there ever since. This is what thirteen years, I think, at the gallery. That's about right. <clears throat> and uh, at the gallery, the mission statement of the gallery is all the visual, literary, and performing arts. And for a while, we had uh, authors who would come in and do, the, uh, you know, expose everyone to their books and and the world of uh, the literary arts. We would have uh, performing arts, but the only place we had to do that was at the little church behind, next to the police department. Right. And then they exchanged hands, and we had no place for that. So we, my husband and I, because my passion is theater, I, I uh, have seen theater working with people to build self confidence, to build all of those things, and I wanted to give that back. Uh, to the community, I used to write children's play, direct those, and and uh, do that with the kids when I was uh, still as an educator. So we decided to do a play, and the first play we did was still Magnolias, and we rehearsed everywhere because there wasn't any place to rehearse. <laughs> the church, the out in a shed, did the first uh, production that weekend was out at the Lions Den which was great, but every night we had to strike the set and get it all ready for a a reunion the next morning and then put it back up. (laughs) So when that was over and very successful, uh, we were sitting in Sam's studio because by that time Sam and I had purchased the building next to the art gallery and we were living upstairs in the two-story and he's a glass artist, so it's his art studio was downstairs and we were all complaining because there was no place to perform. 
and we already had gotten that juices excited again and so wanted let's to make do. one. And the community was wanting to go see when's the next play. Right. And so we all looked at it, and Sam quietly, if you know Sam, he's very quiet, but he's sort of like the wind of all of our our um, wings. And he said, well, y'all can do it here in my studio. So he moved his glass studio to a tin can in the back, <laughs> little metal building with no air conditioner or heating. And we put up a... 16 by 30, I think, inch uh, feet, mm. not inches. That would be very little. Yeah. 16 by 30. <laughs> Micro theater. <laughs> Micro theater. A little black box and yes. downstairs. And audience was on three sides. And it all went from there. And uh, night in 2008, we got the building where the present uh, Emporium stage is now. And so we now have tripled the size of our stage and excited about it. Our motto on both sides were um, wish it, dream it, do it. And that sort of as long as we can keep going forward and with the support of the community and and uh, people that are not in Tyler County uh, to come and see it. It's, I think, a great gift and a, and a help with the rounding out the wellness of our of our community. I agree. And, I'm, you know, it's interesting to note uh, that as an educator that you brought art into the classroom and had the fun Friday activities and was able to get the participation of the students. And now that you're doing it, you know, for the community, for adults and children as well, whomever, that for the betterment of the community, for the welfare of the community, I've always maintained that, that art, reminds you to stay alive that mm-hmm. you know whether you're a child in school it helps you do better or whether you're an adult dealing with the everyday trials and tribulations that life tends to throw at us that art it helps you to, to rem- it reminds you to stay alive it helps you to do better and um, especially if you're able to participate in it whether you're able to enjoy it as an aficionado of painting or music or whatever or take an active role as a you know painter or composer yeah. or writer or right. Whatever it, discipline you yeah, have. It, through the years, yeah. and especially with the theater, um, with the art, the first time I, on that Friday afternoon, uh-huh. even before we started the Fun Friday, I said there were about eight or nine kids that weren't able, they were going to watch a movie or video or something, weren't able to do that. So I said to all the 80, 90 kids, if you want to go watch this program that Friday afternoon, you know, right. sort of downtime. Uh, go do it if you want to stay with me and do art. So I had about nine kids stayed with me. The next Friday, I asked that question, and I had 86 kids stay with me. And the rest of my colleagues said, "Uh uh-oh, we got to look at this, (laughs) because the kids were wanting to express themselves um, and be able to explore and appreciate. Uh, A lot of times I have people say we don't do art, it's like there's a two categories. It's all the regular people, and then right. there's all the art people. But really, we do art all day long. We decide oh, what color true. and decorate our home, or what color the vehicle, or what you're going to wear. And then the theater side is, we love the Emporium stage, especially during the summer. Right, the summer stock the Summer shows. stock, Those because really we have cool. kids who don't aren't athletes, who don't fit in the norm of what we think kids should be do. And they find a place to come and to explore uh, outside themselves, be characters, be the bold one when they're really very shy. So we're really excited of how the performing arts has um, brought a a whole community of, of all ages and generations to the, to Tyler counties. That's great. And and I agree the performing arts, it helps you. It helps a lot of us to, to get out of our shells, whether it's, you know, seeing live theater or participating in it or going to a musical performance. It, it really, it helps a lot of us uh, with whatever we're dealing with, or if we're feeling kind of withdrawn or in the, in our shell, you know, so to speak to, to come out of that. And for those of you listening to this, um, 
the the Emporium's a great venue, and uh, just keep abreast of in the booster of shows that are coming up, and and the particulars of them, and and come out and see a show. It's it's actually the Emporium and and the Art Gallery. If you're if you know where we're at here at the booster office in Woodville on West Bluff Street or Highway 190, they are just right adjacent to to where we are. And uh, yeah, so um, it was cool that uh, kind of talking about um, going back to the watching something grow, whether it be with the kids or the art league. Now, um, for those of you listening to this, uh, our uh, video editor, photographer, web guy extraordinaire, Jim Powers, his name's not Jack, but he's a gem of all (laughs) trades who's actually filming this uh, uh, this particular podcast, he was he's told me before about kind of the genesis of of the art league, and it just started from you know a few people meeting out at the Ham House one very right. chilly November and Jim day. Was one of those. Yes, yes, and <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's it's grown uh, since then. And and how many members do you well, guys? Well, we went the have? first year. We started with eight of us, um, and by the end of the first year, when we had our first celebration, we had four hundred something members. Wow. And we still, you know, that number goes back and forth. But we showcase about 100 artists, uh-huh. their work. We're not a museum. Right. We are a gallery. And not only do we now have space for artists, but we also have space for the local uh, craftsmen, right. the woodworkers, the jewelry makers. And so their work is there also for sale. So it's a wide variety. I've always said we've had in the gallery for sale uh, seventy-five cents was the cheapest in the gallery, and fifteen thousand was <laughs> the most expensive in the gallery. And we've sold both of those. <laughs> so, Very good. But it's a uh, it's a great. And now we've got in the art gallery, we've got a uh, Cynthia Stewart uh-huh. and a couple of other uh, our artists are doing classes, and those classes are filling up a lot. We've got a watercolorist that's coming in right. to do, if you want to dabble a little with watercolor and explore that, uh, that's available. If you want to do like a paint alone, like whatever you have in other towns, like painting with a twist. Yes. Uh, Sam's going to be this spring uh, doing some stained glass classes. Nice. And I hope to get, what Sam and I both do uh, hot glass, blown glass, uh, beadwork and I do clay so we're trying to get that studio up and running <laughs> when we closed him down a long time ago <laughs> he's just been making it possible for everybody right. else to do their work so so the gallery is doing well and and when you're thinking about Christmas gifts and stuff just oh, yes. they need to drop in the Emporium is uh, we offering now not only um, play productions but concerts right and uh, guitarist, uh, blues. We've had uh, uh, Jeff Simmons with uh, the Jazz Innovators coming in. We've had Jim Simmons and Jim Boone oh, from yeah. Lamar have done some uh, big band music. And Jimmy Simmons is so great. He is, yeah. he is. And he's going to be here he's tomorrow night oh, cool. uh, to watch the, the Cruz Brothers. brothers. Yeah. And the Cruz Brothers are a guitar. Edgar Cruz came several years ago, and he really sort of has adopted uh, Woodville and the yes. Emporium stage. He loves it. Uh, so if he's going to be anywhere, he lives in Oklahoma City, and if there's anywhere in Texas then that he can sort of get here, he'll stop by and, and do a concert and bring somebody with him. He's brought Michael Kelsey before. Mm-hmm. His brother Mark is a guitar professor at San Marcos. Right, right. You were telling me. And so me, he's yeah. coming tomorrow night, and, and they, they're... You know, the quality of the is unbelievable. If you want to hear, I guess, what I, I call stunt guitar playing folks, uh, the Cruz brothers are definitely uh, some people to, to listen to. It's and amazing. Mark, Mar- uh, Michael Kelsey, definitely. Michael Kelsey, too. He'll be here in, in April. You know, uh, interesting to note, like uh, when I wasn't living here in Tyler County, before I moved back, um, I remember being in Oklahoma. I was still keeping abreast of things through the booster and, and whatnot. And... Uh, I remember being up in Oklahoma and seeing the name on a flyer, Edgar Cruz. I'm like, I know that name from somewhere. And and then I was looking back at an issue of the booster and they were at the Emporium mm-hmm. that the I think the week before. And so that that's one of the cool things about Woodville is, you know, making and, and what you have achieved with the art district here is you've been able to put on a wide variety of, of 
performance arts as well as, uh, you know, to showcase a lot of painters and people like that. But people who are outside of, of kind of mm-hmm. our area, outside of our region, outside of our state, and, and make them want to come back and, and keep coming back and yeah, Sam and, and I made a sharing commitment. their magic. Yeah, Sam and I made a commitment that we would do quality or we wouldn't do it. There you go. And sometimes we, nothing on that wish it, do it, dream it. Uh, had you have to have money to do that, <laughs> and luckily we have a lot of uh, uh, musicians who've come right. and donated their time, or given us a really good break on how much it costs to get them here. Uh, Michael Kelsey, the first time he was here, he's very innovative. He does wild stuff with his guitar, <laughs> um, but he was at the almost standing room only at the. Colt Stadium in Indiana, uh-huh. and then he was here the next day nice. on this little stage. They love having being so close there, but we do uh, we try to bring that quality. The hard part for us is letting the public know right. that they don't have to go to Houston, Beaumont, whatever, or Oklahoma City. Oh yeah, to see the quality work, and that is the same thing with our production. Absolutely. So we're really excited about the production. So it's a really a packed couple of weekends for at the Emporium because yeah. you've got the Cruise Brothers uh, tomorrow, but then uh, this weekend, the next weekend, the 16th through the 18th, you've got a production of the Glass Menagerie. Right. So, which I think is is going to be great. You know, you don't see Tennessee Williams performed in this part of the country that often, but uh, yeah. that's that's going to be great. Well, and tell I'm, us a little bit about well, that. Well, the, the, we have a young man that started with us when he was a junior, senior in high this school. This is Holden. Holden it's Holden Cox. Cox. He's from uh, Kirbyville, but he mm. got involved with us. And when he graduated and went to the conservatory in New York uh, and studied there and graduated, he came back to this area uh, this summer to do summer stock with us. And staying a little, and I told him, because he's such talent, right. I asked him one day, so if you could have your dream uh, cast, a uh, dream character, what would you do? And he said, Tom, in um, The Glass Menagerie. Yeah. And so we're doing The Glass Menagerie. It's a four-cast production. It's this coming, uh, the 16th, 17th, 18th, 7 o'clock uh, curtain, and then Sunday afternoon at 2.30. Right. But it's the very first play that Tennessee Williams ever wrote. Yeah, you'd mentioned that to me beforehand. And see, I'm a fan of, of his work, a lot of his prose, but I didn't realize that. It just It's such a mature work for, for a playwright. And I've, yeah. I've seen it not performed live, but I've seen you know video of it performed by other uh, companies. And, and it's just such a great piece well, of work. It's really sort of an autobiography of him because right. the characters are resembling to his sister and to himself wanting to be a writer. But not being able to. And so it's almost like Tennessee Williams is narrating right. a flashbacks into what what uh, molded him into the being the writer that he is. Uh, the Glass Menagerie is on stage right now with Sally Fields and in New York on Broadway, oh, but that's you right. could get yeah. the same Broadway production here and better. the same quality. Right, exactly. I mean, maybe even a little better. Because yeah. our, our stage is a whole lot better than that because right. the one on Broadway just used a six-foot uh, table. <laughs> <They're> only, <laughs> that was only the only prop, prop, the only on their props instrument. So, <laughs> said, huh? so we do have that one coming. Uh, it's The tickets for that one are 25 for reserve seats and 15, 15 for the door. general. And then in December, we've got two great things going because we've partnered with the Beaumont Community Players. They've Uh been doing theater for 100 years. And so last year, they brought the Marvelous Wonderettes, which is the musical with the 50s, 60s music that a lot of people around the area came to. And so they want to bring something at least once the fall and spring. Right. And so on December 21st and 22nd, they're going to do two performances. They're doing a play called Every Christmas Story Ever Told. And it's a delightful comedy about three actors who are stranded and the rest of the cast didn't show up and they have a full (laughs) house. And so they're trying to figure out how they're going to do this production with all of the cast. So they just start telling every Christmas story that ever, <laughs> there ever is from Frosty to Rudolph to, right. and uh, 
and including some of the traditional songs and things. Three so it's wise good. men. Yeah, so it's like going to be a, a comedy musical. And then some of our college and theater teachers who started with us when they were nine or ten are coming back between Christmas and New Year's to do the 1940s radio play. Yeah, the Charles Dickens Christmas yes. Carol telling. And yes. this is really interesting to me because I really love old radio dramas and, and uh, radio broadcasts right. of plays and, and serials and things like that. Well, and so the audience can see how they, they really make do. the sound effects and, yeah. and all of that. So that's uh, really going to be good. We're thinking about if we can make it happen to do a uh, New Year's Eve um, celebration with the play that that New Year's Eve with uh, the champagne or wine or yes. hors d'oeuvres or something to to uh, make that a little special. That'd so. be great. And then there's spring. Yes. <laughs> and spring is... Season of renewal. Season of renewal with some <laughs> new productions. And hopefully we'll have people who want to audition Yes. Uh, to come out. And if they'll look at the booster... Uh, ongoing calendar they'll That's be right. able to see when to come to audition and also and for you know throughout the paper for press releases yes. and things on, on these shows that are coming up well so. and we have a facebook page yeah. the emporium stage we uh we have a uh, website but uh -huh. right now we're in a need of somebody to help us continue getting that fresh right. but but the emporium stage uh, facebook page is good and Always at the courthouse on the square, what's going on? That's Flyers right. around yes. are, are the boosters really good to help people to well, thank understand? You. And word of mouth. Word of mouth it, is always great too. People will, we've got a lot of people coming in from Beaumont at this time from word of mouth right. for the Cruz Brothers. So, yeah, it's going to be a great show. So, uh, yeah, we, we hope that, you know, a lot of people come out and, and thanks for the props. We, uh, on the booster getting the word out because, you know, anything we can do to help, mm -hmm. uh, to promote the arts here in Tyler County. And, and like I said before, you know, just to show people that there are a lot of things mm -hmm. to do here in these piney woods. It, you hear that from a lot of people. I know you do. I do. And it's, it's common. You might hear people say, well, you know, there's nothing to do here. Yeah. I've got to go to Houston or Beaumont or Nacogdoches mm -hmm. or wherever, but there, there's always something to do wherever you're at. And, um, and thank you for, for uh, bringing a little light into our community. And, uh, you know, I guess the, the term Renaissance man used to be used a lot, um, overused really. And, but you are truly a Renaissance woman.